This was a disaster, I think, for the Walt Disney Company. I think this was a mess for Dana Walden. That was all Dana Walden, and I'm sure Bob Iger was sitting there uh, enjoying every minute of it. Actually put on a trumpet. Holy shit. Well, I mean, did you see that performance last night? I mean... You felt like you, you, you owed it to him to put the hat on. Oh, I see. I see. I ain't voting for that chick. Bro! You, look at this. This is going to be on every commercial. presidential debate uh, between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris and the Walt Disney Company. And Kamala Harris and the Walt Disney Company were on one side of the stage, and Donald Trump in America was on the other side of the stage. Uh, that's a fact. Well, uh, I'll tell you this. There's a, there's a funny way to look at it, and it's the video that I re released this afternoon. Last night was why Bob Chapek had to go. Yep, exactly. If you want to know why he had to be out of there. Yep, that's... and Jeff Morrell. Jeff Morrell, too. Yep. So the, the whole... Th and Listen. there was another one today. Alexia Quadrani bailed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk so, about that. So... Disney stock. Disney stock. I don't know what it ended at. It was it was at the 86, 87 mark at various points of the day. Mm -hmm. This is a stock that was up there near 200 under Bob Chapek. It's now at 87, you know, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, they sacrificed... All of the 401ks, the right pension back. plans, Sorry. everything. They, they sacrificed all the stuff, you know, for innocent people who were invested in Disney. They sacrificed all of that so that they could have last night. They want political power. Uh, Dana Walden, we now know from the New York Times, was intimately involved in taking out Bob Chapek and getting Bob Iger in. If you were wondering, will Dana Walden be the next CEO? Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you there's likely uh, a big O. And uh, it's not uh, it's not anything. It's O W E in terms of they they need to pay her back for getting rid of uh, Chapek and bringing Iger back into the fold. She seems to have coordinated it. She is besties with Kamala. She's oh, yeah. such besties with Kamala that she introduced Kamala to her husband. Mm -hmm. um, and in that New York Times, we find out Dana was going on walks all the time with Iger. The funny thing about that is because Dana was orchestrating all this behind the scene with Iger. Both of them were under contract with Disney. Both of them were supposed to be reporting up to the CEO. Instead, they was they were subverting him and insubordinating him yep. with no penalty whatsoever to them. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. And and it, it, this has been um, you and I have talked about this. I mean, I remember back in the heyday where you and I had our very first phone call, uh, the first time we actually spoke to each other. Uh, in person, uh, well, it, in person, in terms of vocally, right? Sure. Yep. Yep. Um, and this, and that was this was way back in the days when you were not even at twenty thousand sub, uh, subscribers. Two and a half yet. years ago. Yeah, two and a half yeah. years ago. Um, we were but babes back then. We were. Uh, you know, we, we talked about this, and 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 again, you and I were of a very similar, if not identical, mindset uh, when it came to the Walt Disney Company, where this was going. And 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 I'm not trying to toot our own horns here, but I think there is there is some tooting deserved here. But we've been we've been dead on the money the entire for the last two and a half years. Uh, you know, we've been telling folks out there, and I think this is why our audience keeps coming back. And I'm 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 not the type. And look, I love to make a lot of sarcastic jokes, uh, and I, I will go out there and you know we'll do all the funny stuff. But you know, seriousness. I'm not the type that that will, you know, rah rah the flag out there. But th what we saw last night with the presidential debate, what we saw uh, Disney do, what we saw ABC do, Dana Walden specifically, and people ask, why all of a sudden, Valiant, are you talking about Dana Walden in terms of her relationship to this? Well, for what Pro just said, apart from the fact that 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 she has known Kamala Harris, apart from the fact that. You know, she goes jogging in the Brentwood neighborhood in Los Angeles with Bob Iger and Kamala uh, and introduced They're Kamala all neighbors. They're, They're all listen, neighbors. But if Kamala, they didn't live on the West Coast, they'd live in Martha's Vineyard. They're all yeah. together all the time. Right. 
And 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 the thing with with Dana Walden is is she was brought in uh, in the last few years with the Fox acquisition, and uh, Dana Walden is she is the co-chair of the Walt Disney Company Studio System with uh, Alex Bergman. And but Dana Walden's specifically her role at Disney is over television. Bergman is basically over the movie studios, film and movie studios, and Dana Walden is over the, uh, the, the TV side. So ABC especially and this debate, this was what you saw last night was all Dana Walden. And Dana Walden right now, according to all the sources out there, um, she is in the catbird seat to take over the Walt Disney Company, and succeed Bob Iger. That's that's where Disney's about to go. If you thought Disney is bad now, get ready for when she takes the, the, the C-suite. Get ready for when she takes the two-shower uh, uh, executive suite. You know, the, the, most, the most damning thing in, in terms of motives in that whole New York Times article was when Bob Iger mocked Bob Chapek in front of all of the Hollywood elites. Mm -hmm. And do you know how he mocked him? He mocked him by suggesting that Bob Chapek was from Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. Terre Haute, that's, Indiana. That's that to them. That is, you are a rube. You are a nothing. If you come from a rural area, if you are from flyover country, these yep. people, they may have yachts that they ride on, but they are garbage on the inside. They are dumpster fires for their souls. I mean, just the idea that you would mock someone with your elitist caviar buddies over them being from, and he's not even from Indiana. He's from Illinois, but yeah, the idea well, that you would that, mock him over it. What that's the, that's the insult is he's from Southern Illinois, uh, not Indiana. Uh, and right. that, that's, that's kind of, that's where the dig was from. Um, but yeah. Last night, I guess I guess that that really rings at home even more when Kamala Harris was allowed to get away with, uh, you know, m making such statements as she has before by saying that January 6th was worse than 9-11. How awful a human being well, you would have to be uh, to here, make that. Here's how last night worked. Uh, seven times they interrupted one candidate. 11 yep. times they fact checked one candidate. Yep. 10 of those times were incorrect fact checks. Yep. Uh, and the other candidate had zero in both categories. So, and in terms of the questions that we had last night, this was a valiant. Imagine you were on the debate stage. It'd be something like this Mr. Renegade, why are you a pile of crap? Blah, 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 right. blah. All right. And uh, opponent to Renegade, how long have you known this man is a pile of crap? And then when you <laughs> tried to respond, say, we have many topics. We can't get you right now. Yeah. yeah that, that, was, that. I That's turned it off. Listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm a, I'm a news junkie. Uh, it's not what I do on YouTube, but I am a news junkie. And I had to turn it off. And I, I felt disrespected that we were not allowed to have a debate. And we were not. I mean, that wasn't a debate last night. It wasn't. And people no. people can call it sour grapes. They can say, oh, well, you know, you know you're know, you mad about the calls of the referee like that. In a football it was, game. I saw people making comparisons, and I think justifiably so, to what I saw uh, over 10 years ago now. When CNN's Candy Crowley, uh, Ooh, is this uh, the Mitt Romney one? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Can Candy Crowley was an absolute horrible moderator. Uh, she was the size of a building in downtown Manhattan, uh, and 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 her mouth was even bigger, and but she no. could not shut up the entire time during that debate with Obama and Mitt Romney, uh, because it, same problem is that as the debate moderator, she consistently injected herself into the debate in a very lopsided situation where she was constantly, quote-unquote, fact-checking Mitt Romney, which she wasn't fact-checking anything. She was literally just uh, parroting Barack Obama BS talking points and, and letting Obama say whatever he wanted— a lot of which was was just complete false statements. We saw a lot of that last night. Jacob Fox fires for five. Trump nor Harris won last night, but there was a loser. ABC and Disney 
uh, representatives would have struck if the debate reps would have Republicans would have struck if the debate was biased and last night was blatantly so. Yeah, it was so bad. It was so bad. I thought, look, if if you look at the reactions to it, even the like Trump, I thought turned in a very good performance in the opening of the debate. I think there was a couple of questions that he got sucked into. Yeah, I think he kind of lost his composure when he got too worried about the whole yeah um, size of the crowds thing. And yeah, she, she yeah. keyed in on that. Like, because that's the thing. I was like, at first, I agree with you because my whole thing was as long as he just kind of sits back and waits for her to start attacking him, because I knew that's all she could do. She had nothing else to really do but attack him on this, that, and the other. Yeah, He could have just let her do that all day while just going off about what he's going to do and what he has done. Instead, he let that get under his skin. That was probably the worst part. But like, like, like pro, I ended up stopped watching about halfway through. When I seen this was a yeah. This is basically a three on one debate here. This isn't even a well. Here's the oh, thing, though, is that if, if you look at the first thirty to forty five minutes to an hour of it, if if most people were like you, where they just got to a point where they tuned out, by the time they tuned out, most of those people, at least according to some of the polling data, had pretty much made up their mind that Trump came out better in that debate than Kamala, which was not a surprise. And most importantly, like you guys have been talking about, like we've been talking about, is that uh, the real problem in that debate was ABC Disney. Uh, and and, and, and that, was a, that was a win for Trump in that regard, meaning that if, uh, people viewed— If ABC and Disney had pulled that back by half, so there were— 18 times the moderators acted in, inappropriately, either interrupting a candidate or falsely fact-checking them. And every time it was against one candidate. Um, if they had done that seven or eight times, I think they could have thrown an assist to the person they wanted to win and been successful. I think because they were so ham-fisted, I actually yeah. think that they created a backlash even among moderates. And yeah. you know, those on the on the left are having a sugar high today and those on the right are having a doomsday. Uh, I'm here to tell you, folks, that debate didn't move the needle one way or the other. No. And it's going to come out to a couple of things. One is turnout. And two is going to be um, how much particular areas of the country suddenly have influxes of voters. Quote, unquote, voters. So, yeah, I, I, if anything, it helped Trump. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. If anything, it helped Trump. Trump had two choices, get in the debate or don't get in the debate. If he didn't get in the debate, then the news media for the next two months leading up to the election would have been pounding Donald Trump on being a coward, that he was afraid to debate Kamala, that he was too stupid. He was afraid if Kamala would outsmart him and all this kind of stuff. And you know that's what would have happened. Or if you're Donald Trump's campaign, you say, all right, we know we're walking into a trap. We know we're going to be at a disadvantage. But the best and first step of avoiding a trap is knowing that there is one. And I think that's where Donald Trump's campaign was operating from, was knowing that this was a Walt Disney Company trap. This was a Kamala Harris campaign Walt Disney Company trap, a Dana Walden trap. And they figured... We can go in there and we can play our game on their stage. And as long as we hold ground, as long as we don't lose any votes uh, or piss anyone off, then it's a total win for us because that's what they're after with this setup. And I think in that regard, I think Donald Trump walked away. And I think this is why a lot of people think that Donald Trump walked away last night's staccato as the victor. Not because it was a total wipeout of Trump over Harris from a debate standpoint, but from the perspective that Trump walked on stage and he did his job. Yes, he tripped up. Yes, he, I think he was drawn into some arguments that he shouldn't have been, like we talked about before. But I think Trump walked away unscathed in terms of uh, losing support. I don't think he lost any support last night which in other words was a victory for him because it seems like if anything, the single biggest 
uh, uh, takeaway from last night for average, not me, not political aficionados, but average Americans last night was the fact that the Walt Disney Company tried to drive a truck over a presidential candidate deliberately, and it pissed the middle off. It pissed off the independent voters. It pissed well, off the— Trump did pick up uh, some support. I've got two yeah. links for you in the private chat backstage. These are real Valiant, uh, and they're unbelievable. I did not know this was sent to me. And uh, apparently the current president of the United States is struggling with uh, some mental issues, which I think is why he was replaced. No, I'm not. These, these are, <laughs> sorry, Mr. President. Um, he apparently at a 9-11 ceremony today actually put on a Trump hat. Holy shit. I can't. Well, I mean, did you see that performance last night? I mean. You felt like you, you, you owed it to him to put the hat on. Oh, I see. I see. I ain't voting for that chick. Bro. You, look at this. This is going to be on every commercial. It's real. He put on a Trump hat. I have a feeling there's going to be like a three-hour Cobra cast tonight on on Jeremy's channel just with this three-second clip. Check check the uh, there's a close-up photo of it. The the man he the president of the United States, who's Democrat, put on a Trump hat. I Jeez like Louise. turtles. Jeez Louise! I just I I can't even. I mean, it's like if Trump came out wearing a I love Kamala shirt. It you wouldn't believe it. Except there it is. Except there it is. Yeah. I, comma, it, comma, 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 chameleon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he, here, here's the close up shot. I'll, um, I'll, I'll bring this one in as well. Uh, holy crap. Wow. There he is. That, that, that's it right there, bro. He's, he's being punked by the entire room. Look, the crowd is clapping and they're, they're laughing. Yeah. That's why, that's why. Look at that bad guy. He has no idea. <laughs> Oh man! Wow. wow, I feel sorry for that idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tom! Corn Pop was a mean dude. Uh, bad I, dude, very bad dude. Chad, it's, bad Chad, it's dude. not I, AI. It's, you it's frat faced pony soldier. I, I miss the days of Corn Pop. God. I, uh, we, we actually had, I don't know, I know we've been kind of dancing around. This has been a great conversation. I've enjoyed the hell out of this. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.